Hello, everybody. Good news for all those who are making their own PCBs. KiCad or KiCad, technically KiCad, according to the fact that it's made by French people, but I've always said KiCad. Um, anyway, has just come out with version 7.0.0 uh, in the middle of February, so a couple weeks ago, and uh, I've been looking at it a little bit last night and dug through all the changes, and it's very exciting. So. We're going to have a quick tour through their blog post describing the changes. We're going to go through what it all means and uh, go through some examples as well. Let's take a look. So uh, this was February 12th, so almost three weeks ago now, uh, but very, I don't know, two weeks. Anyway, <laughs> this is a part of their goal to release a new version every year, which is, wow, kind of ambitious. but. Um, they just missed their January 31st release date they were aiming for, but um, I think we can give them a little bit of a two-week grace period. They have made a huge amount of changes, and there's some really exciting stuff in here. So let's just dive in. Custom fonts. This is a really exciting one for me uh, because I've already made a PCB where I had to compromise on this and go into graphics to create the design that I wanted. So uh, I was making a little layout for the Xiao BLE from Seed Studio. The Xiao, I believe it's the BLE NRF 52840 BLE Sense. And uh, you know, I'm sh I think that they actually do have keycode libraries out there, but I decided to make my own just because. And I like to put little Easter eggs in my custom footprints. So I put Jayo, which means uh, sort of like, go for it, uh, go get it. You know, most literally it means like add fuel or add oil, but I thought it would be cute to put on there because it's a Chinese board. Um, and now you can just do that. So uh, <laughs> in order to do this, I had to draw it. No, I had to type it out in a text editor, screenshot it, and then uh, take that into the bitmap converter that is one of the tools that's available in KiCad, and uh, then <laughs> turn it into a footprint, bring that in as a graphical element, and add it. And as you can see, it's got kind of a charming, like, uh, rounded off look that you get when you trace images. But uh, now you can just put it in with a custom font. So that's beautiful. Uh, your your system font, any system font will work with this. Um, and I've just realized that I didn't tell people what KiCad is, but so it's a, an open source option for designing PCBs. And they're doing a fun drive right now. They're almost to their $100,000 uh, goal for donations, but there are a couple of really good tools just to start you off with, uh, with some intro material. SparkFun has a beginner's guide to KiCad. It is a few years out of date, I think. This might have been done a few years ago, so uh, oh yes, here we go using KiCad 4.0.6. So, you know, uh, take that with a grain of salt. Similarly, Getting to Blinky is a really great series from Chris Gamble over at Contextual Electronics. He is, um, he's done a number of different ones of these. I always meant to get around to watching Getting to Blinky 4, but this one uh, is centered around the 5.0 release of KiCad. So it's also a little bit out of date, but 7 just came out and I honestly, I just finished watching this series uh, and there was a lot of useful stuff, especially stuff about hotkeys and a little bit about PCB design uh, conventions that are useful to know. So I still recommend this series for if you're just dipping your toe into KiCad. Let's get back to exciting new stuff for people who have been in the ecosystem for a minute and might not know about the new stuff. So yeah, bunch of custom fonts on here. Look at that on the schematic. Beautiful. You know what? Actually, I've just realized, is this oh, schematic PCB and worksheet editors? Oh, look at that. I really could just put it in the, the PCB layout tool. It's gorgeous. Oh, text boxes. You can put text boxes in both the schematic and PCB editors. So when they say PCB editor, uh, you might think, isn't this all PCB editing? There's sort of two main tools that you're generally working in when you're doing your designs. There's the schematic and there's the layout. So when they say the PCB editor, they basically mean the PCB layout editor, the place where you put your physical sort of designs, your footprints, your how the thing's going to be cut and shaped, you know, all the, the copper layers, the really bare metal stuff, literally, and solder mask covered layer metal. <laughs> okay, uh, space mouse support, self-explanatory. <laughs> I don't have a space mouse, but if you do, maybe you'll be rejoicing. 
I, I think I have friends who were excited about that potential. Uh, crash reporting, fiddly do. I remember there being some, a uh, little bit of controversy, a little bit of kerfuffle around changes in how different applications are collecting data. They go a little bit into explaining what data is collected and uh, why they want to collect those data. Uh, PCM automatic updates, plugins. I don't even use any plugins, but this actually uh, woke me up to the possibility. So it now automatically checks. Uh, you can, when you first fire up version seven, as I did, you get a choice about whether or not it does automatically check for updates in your plugins. And you can select that or deselect it. Uh, I deselected it because I didn't have any installed yet, but you know, I've just started digging into what options there are. And so uh, Elector Meg has this article that I've linked down in the description below, along with a bunch of the other things that you're going to see here. And right away, there's this stretch plugin, which shows a teardrop shape on this uh, through hole, which is something that someone told me that I should do for one of my flex PCBs. Um, when you have these flat, uh, non-curved lines, like abrupt changes in direction, these joints between the through hole and the uh, the trace on the PCB. On flex PCBs, apparently this is kind of a no-no because they are brittle. You know, they're, they're weak points that will, as the PCB flex, flexes, they're likely to break. So doing a teardrop shape like this uh, prevents you from having to do that. And I was using my standard uh, screenshot the PCB layout, take it over to KiCad, <laughs> and draw stuff manually, and then port it back. But actually, there's a there's a tool for that. There's a plugin for that. So I'm just going to go install that after I do this video. And you know, there's a bunch of other cool ones in here that I haven't checked out yet either. There's also a uh, the Elector article I think links to this uh, GitHub repo of third party tools as well, which is a pretty Good exhaustive list. Do -do 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 -do. Look how many. Lots of gold to be found in there. What's this? Oh, this is stretch, yes. Stretch that one with the teardrop. Uh, through holes and stuff like that. There's other stuff as well. Apparently it's pretty strong for doing graphical editing on your PCBs in general, which I do a lot of art PCBs, you might have noticed. And so this is def something that I could definitely use. This kind of stuff. Woo, yeah. Anyway. Back to the releases. And also, Tariq, thank you for chiming in. I am well. It's rainy here. I love it. Uh, how are you doing? I will check later. <laughs> uh, so that's plugin checking. Drag and drop. So you'll be able to drag files into the project manager to open them, as well as a bunch of other operations that you can now complete by dragging and dropping if you just love dragging and dropping stuff around, which, you know, is handy. I like Osh Park uh, for various reasons, but one thing that's cool about their interface is that you can just drop your KiCad um, project file onto here, uh, layout file onto here, and it will uh, automatically extract it, which is beautiful. Love a drag and drop. Mac OS, uh, Apple Silicon support, beautiful. We've got the M1 and M2 chips, custom Al Apple Silicon chips out now. Uh, laptops running these, so now you can run KiCad on your fancy new laptop or whatever. Command line interface, lots of options for exporting stuff. Export your bomb, export uh, Python bomb, <laughs> export your netlist, PDFs, SVGs, drill files, etc. So, remember how I just said that uh, my partner and I were just watching the Getting to Blinky 5.0 series? Um, well, the main thing that he said was, oh, why can't you just make a rectangle? Like, you have to draw these lines individually. Well, there you go. Circles and rectangles on demand. Uh, it's actually really nice. I'm going to show you. Uh, we might get a little bit of a nightmare scenario here with an infinity thing where you're going to see my face and then my face, my face, because I'm going to share my whole screen so I can show you KiCad. But um, we're going to jump into here. Do, 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 do. Yep, infinity mode. But <laughs> yeah, so where were we? Rectangles. Check it out. We're going to go onto edge cuts layer. We're going to grab the rectangle over here. We're going to make a rectangle. Oh, <laughs> that didn't do the thing. We're going to make it on silk screen layer. Rectangle. 
go. Why are you not doing the thing? That's very strange. Okay, I think I'm in some weird mode actually where it's um Oh no, there we go. We got the silk screen rectangle. Let's do a circle. Do a circle, please. There we go. Whoop, boop, 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 boop. Oh, you know what? I think I was clicking and dragging when what you need to do is just like click once and then click again. There we go. Gorgeous. Whoa. Apparently I toggled some kind of square mode where it's automatically doing squares. Um, also notice that it's snapping really nicely when I cross another boundary. It is also um, giving me dimensions overlaid directly on there while I'm laying down my thingy, which, uh, you know, there are tools at the bottom of the screen that show you, you know, what your X and Y positions are and stuff. But uh, here you're just getting the dimensions right there. Look at that. And that's a, something that they mentioned later on in the article as well, radius tool. So if I want a 40 millimeter across circle, 20 millimeters radius, beautiful, done. All right, what else were we going at? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep us in this view. So schematic and simple letters, circles and, and rectangles, love it. Orthogonal dragging, look at this. I've never, ne never actually tried to do this with a chip, but uh, it looks pretty unpleasant and like you'd end up with something really ugly. Now you can drag stuff around and everything stays in beautiful straight lines. It doesn't look awkward and weirdly angular. Um, yeah, look at that. Symbol editor, pin table enhancements. I don't really dig much into this in my daily practice of making PCBs, so um, don't have much to say, but could be useful for you. You get to do these things. <laughs> Again, uh, click the link in the description below if you want to dig into these more yourself. All these things that I'm looking at are down there already. I'm not even sure what like filter pins to a unit means, but someday I will. Off-grid ERC warnings. So rules checks uh, when symbols are placed using an incompatible grid. I often switch between different grids when I'm designing stuff because like I said, graphical things, uh, you know, I'll switch between like in this ruler, for example, I have to even switch between millimeters and inches or mils, which is horrible. I don't recommend it, <laughs> but I'm excited to be doing it anyway. Um, we'll make it work. You know, 2.54 millimeters to uh or 25.4 millimeters to an inch just got to remember that all right so you get warnings now when you're messing around too much with that stuff and it might not actually connect why is it 45 degree angles oh you know what this is in the the schematic editor anyway but uh similarly why is it 45 degree angles in the schematic editor you can have them look at that you can even change part way through the traces, the lines that you're drawing. Shift plus spacebar to cycle between wire drawing modes. Do not populate support. So uh, sometimes you want to make various different versions of a PCB so that you can try out different things. Or for example, I'm actually making one right now. Uh, sorry, we're gonna go infinity mode again for a second. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. There we go. So I'm making this new PCB uh, sort of in my spare time that is, uh, it's designed to be a two-part electrical object, but I've also designed it so that it can be a standalone piece for wearables. Um, so like a desk version that has an additional accessory that sits on the top versus a wearable. Uh, but I want them to both have lots of the same, basically the same items on them. So a button and a NeoPixel ring that are broken out in the top PCB are correspondingly um, well, they correspond to a button on the back of the main board and a single NeoPixel so that you can just do minimal changes to your code, whether you want to have a wearable or a desktop item. And so what I might do is when I'm making it for the uh, the two the two parter, <laughs> you can have like a little do not populate on there. But you know, for people who want to make flexible designs that can go, in multiple different ways, be used in different ways, or even you just you're testing something out and you want to try different concepts on the same PCB. You can do that with this. Yes, Apple ARM support. There's M1 and M2 chips. Beautiful, hooray! It is good to be chilling with your dog. All right, so 
do not populate support. Puts a big red X on it. Love it. Um, and, you know, it won't complain at you with the, uh, the rules checking. Simulation model editor. I also haven't done much like spice or other uh, circuit modeling, but you can do that. And now there's a situ simulation model editor, which is better in some ways. <laughs> uh, you can read about it here. Database libraries. This is really cool. Um, if you're using a component, uh, you can link to an online database. So uh, via ODBC functionality across KiCad's three main platforms. Very cool. Um, so you can create a centralized database of symbol to footprint associations, along with any metadata about your parts that can be shared across your schematics by you and others connected to the same database. I love this. Never used it. Um, Obviously, they just added it to this, but uh, you know, it apparently has existed in other PCB design tools before. I haven't used it, but it sounds nice. Dynamic field col columns in the symbol chooser. Again, something I haven't really used, but uh, you can, if you're a real power user, maybe you'll want to customize your interface a bit more, and you can do that here. Hyperlinks on schematics. So now, inside schematics, you can put a link out to your project page, for example, on Hackster, or a file on your machine if you're just doing everything locally or even on like a local uh, network, um, or a page number within the same schematic file. Cool. PDF improvements. If you're exporting a PDF, you can populate it with bookmarks so that when they open up the PDF, they'll be able to jump to different important parts of your uh, schematic. That's cool. Embedded symbol information. Some PDF specs support this, and some don't, but uh, others may. So uh, check. But yeah, you'll be able to click on items and see additional contextual information. PDF hyper hyperlinks. Uh, remember those schematic hyperlinks? You can put them in a PDF too. Board and footprint editors. PCB footprint consistency checking. So if you've edited something or you might have accidentally se selected one of the pads on your schematic and moved that around without realizing it, uh, then it may be like, hey, this looks different than it did in the library. Are you sure? And then you can be like, yes, or oh no. <laughs> and you can fix it before it becomes a disaster. Ignore the DRC tests tab. If you do choose to ignore d design rules checking tests, so, uh, you know, all that stuff where it's going to throw you the little angry arrows if you're like, ignore, um, at least for design rules checking, stuff like um, trace widths and keep out areas and stuff like that, then you can ignore them. But now you can see which ones you've ignored so they don't just go away. And if you have an issue, <laughs> you can revisit it and be like, okay, did I do something messed up there? Mechanical clearance rules. So uh, you know, a lot of these things, especially through holes, can be both mechanical and electrical connections. And now you can specify mechanical clearances uh, alongside electrical regular you know, clearances. So uh, while the latter, the whole clearance, the electrical versions aren't run on items of the same net, the mechanical versions are. So if you have two parts of the same, uh, that are connected to the same point on the circuit so that they're part of the same component, you know, technically, then, uh, you know, normally it wouldn't check, but now you can because maybe it matters for the mechanical, physical aspects of your product, even if not for the electrical ones. Pretty cool. Like... Maybe you don't care if it's shorted, but you do care if it's touching because there's a you know, supposed to be other stuff there. You can give severities for your rules. Is it a big deal or is it eh? Pad to zone rules, thermal relief. I've this is the first time I've really thought about thermal relief, so I went and looked up uh, a page on it that I've linked in the description below. PCB design analysis insights. So they've got some guidelines here, and you can check that out via the links below. Um, I've noticed these before in some of my <laughs> designs, and there's only so far thermal relief pads will get you. So these like spokes and things like that are designed so that like it's possible to solder to a through hole that is connected to a huge ground plane because it's only connected via these little avenues and not by like the entire, <laughs> you know, just straight into the huge pour. Um, 
You know, this is something that I ran into with this charmware system that I made anytime I try to solder. This is like the first PCB I ever designed. So uh, <laughs> that's why it is the way it is. But when I, they worked great, but um, these PCBs literally are sort of divided in half and have a bunch of different shapes of through holes that go through them that you can connect so that you can connect across their uh, a resistor or an LED or like a read switch or whatever and uh, just sort of test out these co different components and connect them together in a modular way. But these huge pores <laughs> mean that they get really hot and they take it forever to call, cool down. And if I'm using lead-free solder, it's a pain because lead-free solder is quite picky. And uh, you know it's, it just takes forever to heat up unless you put your soldering iron on a truly diabolical ter temperature. So, um, these do actually have little spokes on them. You can't really see very well in here. Uh, I'll pull up KiCad later and show you. But yeah, that's why you want thermal reliefs. And now you can do uh, more with the rules for those. Custom rule constraints for those. Good stuff. Radial dimensions. We looked at that a minute ago when drawing circles, which is also new. This is cool, knockout uh, text object. So it's black and white instead of white on black or you know, uh, <laughs> purple on white instead of white on purple. Uh, if you're doing Oshpark or whatever your color scheme is, you can do a little reverso one, which often is used, for example, to call out ground pins. I've seen that done on Arduinos and seed boards and things like that, um, just so that you can easily see where the ground pins are and uh, other things where you want to just highlight one of the pins, uh, one or more pins, or or other text on your PCB. <clears throat> Automatic zone filling. So uh, whenever you watch a uh, beginner video about PCB design, you'll hear a lot about hitting B to re um, redraw your pores. So uh, again, those giant copper pores that I was talking about, uh, if you route something through there, like stick a trace through there to a different component through there, the, the area that you've placed a pour, then um, you might have to hit B to redraw that whenever you add something new so that it like regenerates how it looks and you can check it again. But uh, you can make it do that automatically. No more hitting B if you're if you choose to put it that way. So I don't think it is automatically enabled. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't used that in my design since yesterday when I when I found out about this new version. Mm. Pardon me. But yeah, so you can make it automatically do that. But again, you may disable that if you're a power user doing something weird or working on very large designs where that's just going to get in the way because it'll take forever and slow down your workflow. But it's in here under the preferences. PCB layout tool enhancements. Again, this is the physical layout. Check this out, background bitmaps. This might actually make my life easier because as I show in the iPad to KiCad tutorial, often what I'll do is like make a little uh, basic layout, export it to uh, a PNG, send it to Procreate, doodle on it on my iPad, uh, take it, <laughs> export that PNG, bring it back into, um, KiCad for each layer, um, then convert it into footprints and import that. But for some things, if it's pretty simple, like this, for example. So this is a prime example. I made this uh, Avnet guitar pick PCB for 100 years of Avnet uh, because they used to own a company called Guild Guitars. And the logo itself is pretty simple. I also used this in my uh, Morse code PCB. Uh, here we go. Boop. Um, just a few polygons, and uh, I think I did end up end up drawing this. No, I did it in Inkscape, and then imported it. But now you can just uh, take that logo, stick it in your design as a background bitmap, and uh, draw over it. So for graphical elements like I was talking about, but in this case, they're using it to, they've taken a picture of an existing PCB, they're recreating the design or updating it, and they're just routing over it and placing uh, through holes and vias over it. Check that out. Magic. 
they've got all these cool little video embeds in here to show you. Um, you can completely unroute a footprint in one go with the uh, right click contextual menu. Ho ho ho, look at that. Uh, automatically complete trace route. There's some interesting stuff here with that, where it's sort of like a collaborative human machine auto routing. If you hate auto routing, maybe you only, maybe you would like it if it only does like part of your design. So you can collaborate on it, uh, you know, drag out to here and then it automatically completes the rest of the connection. A little bit less busy work for you and more peace between humans and machines. <laughs> Attempt to finish selection. Um, you can attempt to auto route, but then it will, uh, I think, come back to you and be like, hey, actually, can you do this if it runs into a problem? Iterate each unrouted part of the item. Yeah, attempt to connect it. There's a new search panel at the bottom of the editor. You can, uh, yeah, filter out different objects and find the thing that you need. Properties panel, take a look at specific items uh, that's under view. I think there's a uh, shortcut for that as well. On Mac, the search panel comes up with command G and you can hit that again to uh, to retract it. Actually, I'm gonna show you this really quick because it's kind of fun the way that they animated it. So let's pull up the full screen and we're gonna get infinity mode again for just a second. Okay. so. Here we are, we're in a little design, I hit Command-G. <laughs> Notice how it kind of stretches there? It's like stretchy and then squishy. I love it. Um, but yeah, then we've got this uh, properties manager that comes in on the left here. Grab something like this It's on the copper layer. Oh, cool. Oh, that's on the bottom copper layer or back copper layer. Uh, fabrication attributes, overrides and stuff. Cool. What was the other thing that I said I'd show you? I don't remember, but it probably wasn't that important. Okay, properties panel. There we go. Improved footprint spread and pack and move uh, footprint tool. I don't work with really large designs, but if you do, you can get better packing. See how this tiny, I think that's a phone up in the top left there. Uh, it looks like one that I've fixed once upon a time. Uh, but. Everything's really spread out when it gets into the layout, uh, time to do the layout with the rat's nest and stuff. You can make it so that it's much more nicely packed. Wait, is this rat's nest or this, is this some other weird thing they're doing that I haven't gotten to because I'm not enough of a power designer? Yeah, this might be like super pro stuff that <laughs> is beyond me, but you can pack it in better. Look at the relative size of that phone in relation to the uh, rest of the stuff packed in on there versus here, it's all spread out, very nice. A uh, powerful new tool has been added. So you can select a logical portion of a schematic in the schematic editor, in the schematic editor, and a new right click menu option or the P hotkey in the board editor. Uh, then you can do the pack and move thing. I don't quite get it, but uh, we're nearly at the end. Some of this stuff goes a little over my head, but I hope to have to worry about, <laughs> about this stuff someday. Step exporter changes. So again, when you're exporting stuff, um, Oh yeah, relative 3D model paths. So I guess the step exporter used to be more uh, separate from the rest of their tools, but now it uses the same PCB parsing engine so that you can use relative paths and that makes it a lot easier to share and export things so that other people can just grab a directory, uh, a zip file or whatever, or something off your GitHub and be able to use it already without uh, dropping stuff into all kinds of horrible places. So there we go. Um, very excited about version 7 of KaiCAD. Ah, what a day. And, uh, ooh, let's stop this. That's about all I've got on that, but I'm going to make sure that we went through all of the tabs because I often bring up other interesting side things that uh, can be useful. So let's see. We're talking about the fonts. Do -do 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 -do. Per model. We talked about flex PCBs and uh, teardrops and the stretch plugin. Check out the iPad to KiCad, iPad to KiCad <laughs> uh, tutorial linked below. More third-party tools. We've got thermal relief. We've got Charmware. Oh, you know, I've got a bunch of other PCB projects up here and I try to show uh, bits of how I went through the design process with KiCad. I've 
I use it uh, only Kakad for my projects because it's open source, so it's free, and it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and I think it's just good to support open source projects. Here is the Morse code trainer I was talking about. And speaking of supporting open source projects, be sure uh, if you appreciate working with KaiCAD, then uh, you might want to think about donating because they're nearly at their $100,000 total goal, which is just beautiful. Love community support. Um, open source is marvelous. Hack on.